subscribe to our YouTube channel. For you that don't know me, I'm Bella and I have this YouTube channel about dogs and dog things. Uh, my dog is right here, his name is Nemo and he's a Russian toy. And as requested today, I'm gonna be talking about how it is having a Russian toy. And I wanted to kind of talk about the backstory and why I got one and how they are as a breed and what you can do with them and all those things. So, I got Nemo in May of 2019. I had wanted a dog for my whole life and I always wanted a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever or a toddler. I studied medicine abroad so I am from Sweden, but I studied medicine in Poland and now I am studying in Sarajevo in Bosnia. And so one of the things I quickly realized was that I have a lot of school. So I can't handle such a demanding dog as the taller is. And therefore I started looking at some smaller breeds and other breeds. In the end, there were three different candidates for breed and the Russian toy was one of them. Uh, I had a few criteria when I looked for a dog and the first criteria was I did not want a dog that had a lot of breed related diseases. So I wanted an overall healthy dog breed. The second criteria was I didn't want a breed that shed a lot or that I had to clip or take to the groomers. Because I'm a student, I knew I was not gonna afford to take it to the groomers every eight to 10 weeks to be groomed. So I wanted something that was very easy to maintain and not at all hard to you know, brush once every now and then. The third criteria I had was that I wanted a dog that was never, never <laughs> gonna be heavier than eight kilos with the bag and the carrier because a huge reason I started looking at small dogs is because I do travel a lot to go home and I wanted a dog that was going to be able to fit as a hand luggage. And then we went to visit a breeder of the Russian toy dogs. He, the first thing he said when we came outside was, wow, I really like these. And so for me, that was like, okay, this is it then. So the Russian toy, what is it? Where is it from? Like, what can they do? So the Russian toy is from Russia, obviously. They were developed in Moscow and they were recognized like in the 60s or 70s or something. Uh, they are very few in numbers outside of Russia. I can go on a huge hike or I can go running and he will come with me. When I looked for dogs, I genuinely wanted a companion dog and I thought this is all that it's ever going to be. But then, you know, you start trading tricks and you start doing stuff, testing out sports and now we're here, we're going to do agility. <laughs> so it's a very fun breed to have. They literally are going to come with you wherever you're going for whatever you want to do they are gonna go with you. And that's one thing I really, really, really love. I really enjoy the fact that he's so easy to take with me. He is so small, he barely takes up space. He will sleep in my lap and stay there. And I mean, you won't see him or hear him or anything. They are a bit tougher, I would say, than other companion breeds. I would say they're not a dog, from my experience, that is okay with just your daily walks here's just a little example of what he will do if we haven't really trained that day so he will come to me on my computer and scratch at me <laughs> and bite on my hands and stand there and i'm like fake tapping and he'll look at me and you know tell me like mom come on let's do something come on let's go mom I want to do something other than just rest here all day. If I do three walks a day, maybe one walk is a hike where he's carrying some backpacks with like 10% body weight or we're doing some balance training inside with like the disc and the balls or we do some agility training, then he's like more satisfied. So usually after we've trained, this is what he will look like. 
he will just be totally out of it and tired and super satisfied for the rest of the day. But another thing that I really love with the toys is that literally they are sleep, 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 sleep. But if you say go, they're like, we're going. Like in one second, they literally turn on and are like, yeah, we're going. And for me, I've never had the problem. Like I've taken like 13, 14 kilometer walks and he does not stop. Like he keeps going, 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 going. And if I say, okay, we're like taking a picnic here, he'll lay down, sleep. And then when we're going, he's like, yeah, we're going and keeps going with me. And I truly, truly love that about the breed. Nano and I, we do a lot of things together. We train some nose work and we train agility and we have some ambitions of competing in agility from next year, 2021. Um, people often ask me like, oh, I couldn't have a tiny dog because I would like sit on him or I'm scared it will get injured and things like that. And let me tell you, they're small, but they are hardy. So, I have had a few accidents with him, stepped on him, like sat on him and stuff like this. But he sleeps in the bed with me and when I move, he like moves out of the way. That's something that he just learned. And even though they are a tiny breed, I would not say that the Russian toy is a breed for having in a handbag. Um, I mean, I don't personally think any dog is. But, I mean, the Russians especially, they aren't. You need to put in some effort as an owner to do something with them for them to be completely satisfied. And, I mean, the sky is the limit with them. You can do whatever you want. They are truly, truly, truly a big dog, but in a super tiny format. They, I mean, I cannot stress that enough. Honestly, I can't stress it enough. Um, I think it's really important to know when you have a Russian toy. You have to be a bit careful with who they play with and the size of other dogs because they are small. You have to really focus on training being quiet because they are in nature an alarming breed. Like they are an alarming breed, but you can train it. For me, I am living in an apartment and it was really important to me that he was quiet. So that was like our main focus goal that he was gonna be quiet. And if you aren't stern with it, it's not gonna change. So, Nemo barks when somebody's ringing the door. Uh, he barks if something is happening outside. That is a new noise that he didn't hear before. He barks sometimes when he thinks he hears something. And he knows when I say Nemo, toast, that means be quiet. Like, it's okay. I usually th say also like, thank you, thank you, like tech tech, um, to tell him like, okay, it's okay, I heard it, thank you. Uh, and I think it's also something you should accept. Another thing that I think is really important is you have to train your toy as it is a big dog. I mean, at first when I got him, I would sit outside for two or three hours in different locations randomly on our walk on a bench and sit and just reward him for people walking by or dogs walking by or cars driving by or trucks driving by and i always try to think of things from his perspective so i always try to think like okay what does he see right now like 
In general, if you're looking for a small, healthy, versatile, trainable, fun, loving, cuddly, I mean, adventurous, will do anything for you type of small dog, this is the dog for you. I mean, honestly, I cannot say that there is one other tiny breed of dog that I would ever get. And when I say tiny, I mean like 10 kilos or below because they are honestly the easiest, most trainable, like loving small little creatures that there are. Okay. So there are, are a few negative things about having a tiny dog and having a small cute dog. Let me tell you. I have had people uh, be shocked that he can walk in stairs. I have had random strangers tell me he doesn't need clothes because he has fur. People constantly like make kissy noises towards him on the walk or say, hi cutie, oh my god, you're so cute. Like in a voice, I have, you know, strangers letting their huge dogs run loose towards him. Um, I've had people try to pick him up. I've had children run towards him, like wanting to pet him. Um, I every day have people think that he's a chihuahua or a papillon. Um, I mean, people just have so weird connotations about having a small dog. Like, you know, people who just, I mean, he knows, I think, probably about 50 tricks. And people are like, oh, he can't learn that. How can he learn that? People who t tell me, like, you should have him in a handbag. Why is he walking? Can't you see he's like shaking? But I think honestly, the most annoying thing is just people constantly like kissing towards him or screaming for him or calling him cat or calling him, oh, he's a little mouse or he's as small as a mouse or people, you know, not like respecting his personal space. That is something that we really struggle with. Um, honestly, yeah, I think that's the most, most negative. And for me, it's kind of a fire under my bum that people like don't think that we can do agility or don't think that we can train. Uh, it's the sole reason why I started the Instagram to show people what a small dog can do. And it's the sole reason that I'm also wanting to upload YouTube videos because I want to talk about what these dogs can do. And I want to talk about, you know, how good these dogs can be if you just put time and effort in it. I mean, one huge thing about these dogs are truly, I say it again, the sky is the limit. They can do anything you want them to do. Honestly, I swear. But due to a lot of these negative reasons, uh, I probably will not have a Russian toy again until I'm old and can't keep a bigger dog. Like there are certain things that are not maybe breed specific, but a little, but they're definitely Nemo specific. Um, for instance, he is, Nemo is highly trainable when Nemo wants to be trainable. In this clip, I didn't really say it clearly, but what I meant to say is if you want a dog that's your ride or die, but you need to work for it, the Russian is the breed for you. The struggle has probably been that he has literally zero motivation for food. Um, to the point where he lost 300 grams because he didn't eat for almost a week and finally now we found a way to bring the food that he eats um, down here to Bosnia it's a bit complicated but it works I have gotten some questions that I want to answer and one question is um, how much grooming do they need do they their ears not a lot so I'm gonna show you this is the brush that I use for his ears. And I also use a fine tooth comb as well. Their ears do get tangled a lot, um, but Nemo has a lot of hair on his ears. So it truly depends on 
if they have a lot of hair on their ears or a bit less because it really varies um body hair wise i also brush him with this but they don't really shed a lot and it isn't so complicated so the next question is how wide is his neck so russian toys if you compare it to for instance a chihuahua have a very very thin neck so Nemo's neck is about 18 centimeters around the third question is what different colors are there so Nemo is a black and tan long-haired then you also have smooth haired, which also come in the same colors. You have like red with black, you have red with tan, you have lilac and tan, um, you have brown with tan. Uh, I don't know exactly if there are any more colors, but you can be more red without any black and yeah, a few different combinations. What I do know is that you aren't allowed to be like solid black and you aren't allowed to be any white at all. <laughs> so that's what I know. Is how long do they live? So they can become actually very, very old. Uh, I don't know exactly, but probably like 15, 16 years old is not, I would say, probably uncommon at all probably it so i want to thank you so much for watching and i hope that you follow us on instagram you can also follow us on facebook and i hope you like and subscribe down below and that's it for now so me and nemo say thank you and bye